Good day and welcome to Nature's Returns, a webinar speaker series hosted by the Yale Center for Business and the Environment. My name is Karina Mahong and I will be your host for today's webinar on the Seychelles Debt for Nature Swap. The Yale Center for Business and the Environment, or CBE, is pleased to continue Nature's Returns, a webinar series that addresses the growing importance of ecosystem valuation and investment. Each presentation is recorded and available on YouTube and Yale iTunes U. We are also excited to share news of a partnership between CBE and the Conservation Finance Network. This initiative provides original content and shares timely news, events, and resources on conservation finance online. The Conservation Finance Network seeks to accelerate land conservation and restoration with financial tools and strategies. By providing training and building a network of professionals across the conservation, finance, and philanthropic sectors, CFN increases the financial resources deployed for conservation. Today, we're excited to have Honorable Dedeer Dogley, Minister of Environment, Energy and Climate Change of the Republic of Seychelles, and Robert Weary, Se Senior Director of NatureVest. They are here to share details of the recently completed Seychelles Debt for Nature Swap deal. The Republic of Seychelles reached a major debt buyback agreement with approximately 30 million with its Paris Club creditors and South Africa. Minister Dogley and Wary will dive into details of the debt restructuring agreement and commitments made by the government to enhance marine conservation and climate adaptation efforts. These marine conservation efforts will be supported by the establishment of a permanent endowment that generates sustainable financing. This deal demonstrates innovative financing for marine habitat protection that can be adapted to other sites in the Western Indian Ocean region, as well as globally. Before we begin the presentation, we would like to remind our listeners that questions are welcome and will be directed to our speakers at the conclusion of the talk. You can type questions directly into the GoToMeeting chat window. And with that, we welcome Honorable Dedeer Dogley and Rob Wary to Nature's Returns. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, here is Didier Dogley, Minister of Environment, Energy and Climate Change of the Government of Seychelles. I um, have been working on the depth swap together with uh, Mr. Wary for the last um, four years and um, uh, it's, it's really a pleasure to be here with you and to be able to share our experience with um, the rest of the world that is interested in the Seychelles experience. Yes, uh, and thank you for this opportunity. This is uh, uh, Rob uh, Weary speaking here. I've uh, been with, uh, working, as the minister said, with uh, the government of the Seychelles for four years. We're very excited to get to this point and uh, I've been with the Nature Conservancy for 17 years, working with uh, small island states and specifically on finance mechanisms such as this. Yeah, Seychelles has, is a country that has always um, put a lot of emphasis and importance to um, the conservation, but also the management, sustainable use of natural resources. Um, we are a country that depends, like most um, small island states, on tourism and fisheries. And um, very early on, back in 1976, um, when we became independent, we started putting a lot of investment um, to make sure that um, the foundation of these two pillars of the economy um, is well guarded and well preserved. Uh, Seychelles has about only one person that is land. <laughs> The rest, 99% um, is basically um, sea, and we have about 1.4 million square kilometers that is um, our exclusive economic zone. And we recognize that this is basically the, um, the, the real uh, value or the economic um, capacity that the country has got. 
And Seychelles also, um, together with Madagascar, the islands of the Indian Ocean, is a very rich area. Um, it has been um, declared as one of the major bio uh, biodiversity centers of the world. And we have huge marine mammal um, animals that come through the oceans, especially during the summer months, which is um, from November until about March. And we have a number of important seabird areas and um, it, in general um, also coral reefs and so on and seabed grasses. So the, the, the country, basically the whole East there is quite well endowed with um, natural resources, not in the, in, in the sense of um, minerals, but mostly natural um, uh, biodiversity and, um, and, and the kind of, um, of well, natural richness that normally such countries have. And Seychelles has been pushing a lot on the blue economy, which is one of the main key points now for sustainable development, because remember back in Rio 20, when um, the world adopted the green economy, Seychelles and some island states decided to push for the blue economy because we see ourselves as um, basically our, our economy is based on ocean resources and marine resources. And we also have been promoting SITS issues across the world. And um, currently Seychelles lead the Western Indian Ocean Challenge, which is similar to the Caribbean and also the Pacific Challenge. So um, some of the, of course, uh, SIDS have a number of uh, issues and, and threats that they're, they're dealing with. Um, Many have uh, very high uh, debt loads uh, that are unsustainable. Um, some of these are attributable to natural disaster, natural disaster recovery costs. Uh, a good example of this is um, back in 2004 in the Caribbean when uh, Hurricane Ivan blew through Grenada and, and damage was 200% of GDP. Uh, and uh, they still um, you know, uh, are recovering from that. And in fact, have just finished up uh, working with the IMF and their creditors restructuring their debt. Uh, something that Seychelles had to do after the global financial crisis in 2008. Um, a lot of SIDS have low growth and, and the combination of these factors uh, mean that they, the countries have limited fiscal space for investment in the environment and adaptation to climate change. Um, and of course, uh, we all know that SIDS are highly vulnerable to external shocks, the, these examples of natural disasters and the global financial crisis um, and climate change. Uh, you know, sea level rise obviously is uh, going to hugely impact islands as well as increased storm intensities and, and things like that. Well, um, Seychelles recognize, especially now, there's um, a number of opportunities. There's the Green Climate Fund that now has become operational, although there's a number of issues that needs to be sorted out so that countries can get access to the financing. There is also quite an amount of um, amount of money which is available, 80 billion a year, is available through the um, um, finance institutions. Um, and there's a number of initiatives that has, has been put into place. And I said there's the Western Indian Ocean Challenge, the Caribbean Challenge, and the Micronesian Challenge commitments, which are slowly um, also um, getting investment and contributions from a number of sources to finance um, the, <coughs> sorry, the conservation of, um, of marine area protected areas and most um, in groups of countries are now pushing for about 20 to 30 percent of marine protected area by 2030 and um, the Rio plus 20 um, during SIPs, the blue economy, as I mentioned, when other countries were pushing for the green economy, um, we, um, the small island states, decided that blue economy more fits our kind of development because of the, our dependence on fisheries and marine resources and coastal tourism. And also it provides um, the opportunities for us to um, improve fisheries management, which has been a major problem for many um, small island states and also many countries. Um, all the FAO reports shows that um, there's depletion of fisheries stock. So this is an opportunity for us to relook at how we're going to manage our fish stocks. Um, and also improve coral reef management, especially when we have these problems with coral bleaching 
which has started since the, um, 1998, when there was a major coral bleaching in the whole region up to the Red Sea. And again, um, probably um, last year we had some bleaching and probably this year, uh, because of El Nino, there will be more um, coral bleaching. So then there's a need to, be, to do more research and also to be able to find solution of how best to deal with that. And of course, there is the question of adaptation to climate change, which is the biggest challenge of all of our um, generation. So um, just a few uh, statements about uh, debt swaps, the history of those. Um, they emerged, uh, the first ones, uh, in the late 80s so during the debt crisis in Latin America, where the U.S. government canceled almost $900 million of debt to seven countries. Um, and while the debt was written off on the U.S. side, uh, the U.S. then said to these countries, well, um, probably a portion of the principal was written off, but uh, then said the remainder you, uh, you spend on development activities, be it environment, health, education, et cetera. So that was the first example of, uh, of debt swaps. That would be a bilateral swap, which was, would be between two sovereign countries. Uh, over time, they've uh, evolved to also include uh, commercial uh, debt swaps and that governments will float notes on the market, for example, that can be bought back or borrowed from banks. Um, but in those cases, you do have to um, buy back the debt um, at ca uh, with cash um, instead of it just being writ written off on the side of the creditor. Um, but often uh, debt can be bought at, at, at a discount and, and that's uh, the the beauty of the swap and where you create leverage um, is buying at a discount and, and restructuring. Um, the Nature Conservancy has a, a bit of experience with debt swaps. Uh, we did a few commercial debt swaps totaling $50 million in uh, Central America in the late 80s and early 90s. And then um, in 2001, uh, we, did, we started uh, working with a U.S. mechanism called the Tropical Forest Conservation Act, or TFCA. Uh, I worked on the first one we did in 2001 in Belize. Uh, we went on to do another 10 of them, uh, mostly in, in the Caribbean and Latin America, um, but also Indonesia. Um, but it allowed the Nature Conservancy to uh, put money in uh, that was matched with funding from the U.S. government, buy debt at a discount, and restructure it. And, uh, and the net of it, and you know, the most important part from our side, and that is the almost quarter billion dollars of new cash flow. Um, this is the principal and interest payments. Uh, for forest conservation in those 11 countries. So uh, we're uh, very big uh, fans of, uh, of these mechanisms and that led us to start working on the Seychelles debt swap. For those in the audience that are just joining us, Minister Didier Dogley and Rob Weary are presenting on the Seychelles debt swap. So far, we've established a need for this mechanism in the Republic of the Seychelles and the use of this tool by the Nature Conservancy. They will now delve into the mechanics of this actual deal. So, um, as we mentioned at the beginning, the, the Seychelles has uh, had uh, debt to um, Paris Club creditors. Uh, in this case, it was France, UK, Belgium, Italy, uh, specifically were the ones who participated, and then South Africa. Uh, for those of you not familiar with the Paris Club, it is. Um, not surprisingly, hosted in Paris by the, the French Treasury, and it, it meets uh, monthly, 10 times a year, and it's basically a place for uh, debtors, countries to come and meet their creditors in one place and uh, renegotiate uh, debt. Um, and so this has been around since, I believe, the 60s. Um, and so uh, that's where we negotiated uh, the, this debt swap in, through the Paris Club. Um, and then, um, as we also mentioned earlier, the, 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 there's a trust mechanism, in this case, the Se Seychelles Conservation and Climate Adaptation Trust uh, was created through legislation um, in uh, November of last year, 2015. And uh, this is set up as a public-private partnership um, with a uh, government putting themselves uh, in the minority on the board, taking four of the nine seats. Um, both Minister and myself sit on the board, um, as well as uh, other um, civil society entities and government entities. And the trust is a um, grant-making entity, not an implementing entity. And so it will manage the, the proceeds of the cash flow uh, from the debt swap, the cash flow from the debt swap, and 
do a annual uh, call for proposals and, and fund uh, projects in, in the Seychelles. Um, and it's a pretty standard mechanism. These conservation trust fund mechanisms have been around 25, 30 years now, and uh, there are probably well over 100 of them around the world. And, and this, this trust was set up uh, following best management practices of, of the conservation trust funds. Um, so TNC then uh, lent uh, and uh, 20.9 million dollars to the trust. Um, this is a 10-year note at 3%, um, and then also uh, worked with the government to raise uh, 5 million in grant money. Um, and that uh, money was then uh, lent to uh, the total was lent to the government uh, as a, in form of a loan. Um, and it purchased, uh, as you can see, the 25.9 million purchased 27.3 million. This was a discount of about 5.4%. Um, and uh, often you can get, uh, you know, when we first started the modeling this about four years ago, we were probably expecting uh, closer to a 20% discount. Um, but uh, over the period of while we were raising the funds and negotiating with the creditors, uh, Seychelles was continuing to uh, do very well with their macroeconomic and fiscal policies, uh, paying down their, uh, their, debt to G their debts, uh, their debt to GDP ratio was coming down. They were running a 6% surplus every year. They successfully exploited the currency. And part of the reason you get a discount is because uh, uh, folks think that there may be a chance of not being paid back. Well, the Seychelles was doing everything right, which meant that uh, the discount was less than uh, we might have gotten three or four years ago. Um, but it still creates, uh, between the grants and, the, and buying at a discount, will create some leverage, as, as you'll see here, um, for funding uh, the work on the ground. Um, so the government then has written uh, two notes to the trust uh, the first note of 20.9 million mirrors the note from TNC, so that will just pass through the trust and, and back to TNC over 10 years, principal and interest payments, as you can see, of about 24.3 million. The second note is the difference, uh, the 6.4 million between the uh, 20.9 and, and, the, and the debt purchase, the 25.9. And this is uh, the, what funds the, uh, creates the cash flow on the ground. This is a longer tenor note, 20 years, uh, same interest rate. Um, and we purposely, um, uh, you know, through the deal, we want to ensure that we uh, improve the government's cash flow and that the, the, the deal doesn't uh, uh, make the government have to spend money any faster. And ideally, it actually uh, uh, helps to uh, create fiscal space by uh, uh, extending out payments. And so we purposely targeted uh, shorter term maturity debt, uh, eight years. and. Through this, we've now uh, you know, raised the, the average maturity to over 12 years, um, which helps then with the, the, the government's um, cash flow management. Um, and so over uh, 20 years, the, the, we'll take about two thirds of the, the, that second note's cash flow. And this portion is payable in, in local currency, Seychelles rupees. Uh, the note is uh, actually written in dollars, but on the day uh, that the government makes a payment to the trust, They'll use the spot rate uh, on the market uh, for between the, the uh, exchange rate for the dollar to the Seychelles rupee and, um, and can pay in, in local currency because it's going to be spent in the Seychelles, so there's no need for them to pay in, in dollars or, or euros. So this is, a, of course, a benefit to the government. Um, and this will fund the work on the ground. So it'll be about um, uh, 280000 a year. Um, and then we'll take the remaining portion, or about three million a year, or which works out to about a hundred thousand a year. We'll go into an endowment, uh, and every year that'll be added to the endowment. We'll hire an investment manager, and at the end of twenty years, uh, we should see the endowment growing to somewhere in the neighborhood of six and a half million dollars. Um, so this is how you really create a, a sustainable finance mechanism in that. In year 21, when the government has uh, not there is has finished making payments to the trust, we can tap into the um, into the endowment, and uh, we're actually trying to create additional cash flow through a little more uh, financial engineering by um, uh, working with a uh, European-based uh, multilateral to um, uh, hopefully buy out TNC's uh, 21 approximately 21 million dollar loan. Uh, this this um, 
European-based multilateral will, will come in and can provide a, a longer maturity, 20 years, and a lower interest rate of one and a half percent. And so uh, they'll lend to the trust, and uh, the trust can will pay TNC back, and then the trust will uh, turn around and extend the maturity on the note to the government, that same roughly $21 million note, but keep the 3% interest rate. So that interest rate differential will generate almost another 200,000 a year in cash flow. So now we're actually looking at about 480,000 a year, almost half a million a year for the trust to distribute. And so now we're starting to talk about some you know, real money where it really makes a difference. Yeah. yeah, the activities that will be funded by the debt swap, well, basically it's about the green economy that we are um, interested in because of the socioeconomic um, activities, especially a lot of um, people depend on um, um, coastal and also marine activities, be it coastal um, tourism, fisheries, and other activities that produce um, an earning for, for our people. And also we, um, we will be um, creating um, the 30% of our EEZ will be turned into um, a protected area. And with that, we will have to have um, enough capacity for us to do proper research and also to monitor and survey and so, um, so as to ensure that the resources that are there, especially to adapt to climate change and also to um, ensure that um, the stocks of fish and also other biodiversity are pro properly protected. And for that, you need the investment. Of course, the 400,000 that will be available will not be sufficient, but it will act as seed funding and will help us to be able to mobilize other funding that will help with capitalizing um, the, the whole activities that we need to do for us to better manage and protect those um, protected areas. Um, we also will be financing coral and mangrove restoration projects which are vital, again, for biodiversity and also for fish stocks. And um, develop also um, and reform fisheries. We are looking currently at how do we um, um, invest in um, aquaculture and mariculture, um, and also to be able to have management plans for various fisheries, um, so as not to um, deplete stocks, but to manage them in more in a sustainable manner. So that will help us um, come up with some money um, to inject in those plans and um, strategies that we are currently looking at. There is also the coastal zone management and marine policies. Seychelles form part of the Nairobi Convention. And um, currently there is um, deep, um, negotiations on a coastal zone management um, protocol. Um, so it gives us a little bit of a um, but advantage in that we we have the financing and able abilities for us to be able then to invest um, in the activities um, that will need to be done to implement that protocol um, but also to better look after our coastal zone areas um, within our territorial waters um, and again it's about um, eco social economic activities that we need to do with fisheries tourism, biotechnology, and other um, areas that we have not really invested in in the past um, so that um, we can broaden um, our economic base within the country. So, and also build resilience, which is vital, especially now with climate change, where coastal communities are being affected by um, sea level rise, um, intrusion of seawater, and also um, extreme storm surges um, an extreme storm um, that nobody will not use to so we need to be able to plan those better and get the capacity for us to be able to um, at least forecast how we're going to be um, affected and also to build the necessary resilience within the communities to make sure that we can um, um, keep on um, functioning as a viable state here in the middle of the indian ocean So um, some of the, the, the benefits to, to government through this deal and, um, you know, one way to look at it is, is you know, we've, we're helping by restructuring the debt. I mentioned the, uh, the um, uh, 
re redirect basically debt service. So instead of it going to their creditors in, in Europe and South Africa, it is now invested in the, in the country with the upwards of about 17 million now being invested uh, in Seychelles um, over 20 years with two thirds of this payable in local currencies I mentioned previously. And then um, improving the fiscal space, again, something I mentioned that you know we've uh, purposely targeted uh, shorter term uh, maturity debt, and now uh, once the uh, we refinance that uh, ten-year uh, impact loan from TNC, uh, all of the debt will have a twenty-year average, and so this will actually create uh, I think it's about a little over two million a year in in, in fiscal space uh, in the budget for for the government, um, and then finally. Um, government entities as well as civil society will both be eligible to receive funding from SACAT. So, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, will benefit government and, and civil society uh, jointly in being able to access these funds. So, um, and so again, just to briefly uh, out, you know, so via this, the, the impact loan of uh, 21 million and the, and the grants, we, uh, see the expansion of the marine protected area system over 400,000 square kilometers of, of new marine protected areas, um, uh, revision and updates of uh, coastal zone management, fisheries, and marine policy, and, and uh, uh, over uh, $9 million of funding over 20 years and, and creating an endowment worth uh, nearly $7 million at the end of the day. Um, and uh, you know, I guess a key point of uh, this is on the first two is that it's uh, the, the via a marine spatial plan, and I'll let the minister speak just briefly on on that marine spatial planning process here. Yeah, as part of one of the products that will come out of the debt swap, apart from the financing itself, there is also the um, the marine spatial plan that we've been working on since 2013, and um, basically with uh, with the support of TNC, but also with um, research that we're doing and uh, a global environment facility project, we've been able to come up with enough data and information so that we could develop the marine special plan for the whole EZ, which is a massive area of 1.4 million square kilometers. And um, since 2013, um, we've been discussing with um, the different partners and also developing um, the concepts and ideas and strategies of how best um, to um, zone, um, identify more or less the, the different areas of importance and the different activities such as, for example, the um, shipping lanes, um, the port areas, um, protected areas, biodiversity conservation related and tourism and also historical dive sites um, which are very important for the tourism activities and cultural value but also um, uh, renewable energy, because one of the things that Seychelles is interested in is how the, can we use our ocean space um, to um, capture the um, energy that the oceans can produce. But also um, there are uh, potential of um, fossil fuel um, being able to tap into that and explore, and exploit, um, explore in, in our waters. So, um, so with all the different um, sectors that are present, um, we needed to come up with a very clear plan of how do we use those various areas without having major conflicts between the areas. And um, we've, since we've started, we've made major progress. We already have a first draft of what the MSP should look like um, during the course of this year. Um, we will finalize the, the plan and then take it to cabinet by the end of the year. And um, once it's been approved, then we will have various milestone um, uh, targets that we will have to achieve during the next um, couple of years. So that Seychelles has got an approved um, marine special plan that we will use um, to help us better manage and better use um, the resources and also the space that we have um, as our exclusive um, economic zone. We've reached the midpoint of our webinar and welcome those just tuning in. Minister Didier Dogley and Rob Wary have outlined details of the Seychelles debt swap. 
In the next 10 minutes, they will describe plans to replicate this model to other small island developing states. We would also like to remind our listeners that questions are welcome and will be directed to our speakers at the conclusion of the talk. Please type them in the chat window. Great, thank you. Um, and hopefully we won't need 10 minutes to go through these. There's only two more slides here, so we have plenty of time for questions. But uh, yeah, the, the pipeline uh, of debt. Uh, so um, when we, uh, we in Paris at the recent climate change conference, we held an event to announce the, uh, the conclusion of the Seychelles deal. And uh, we had a number of countries stand up and say that they also wanted to do these debt swaps, including uh, Grenada, Jamaica, Palau, and the Marshall Islands. Um, and then uh, there are another couple of, couple of countries you see here, St. Kitts and Nevis and, and uh, Federated States of Micronesia, who we've uh, also uh, have had discussions with. And um, this just gives you a little sampling of, of the, the debt that uh, we're targeting. Um, you know, the, there's a combination of bilateral and commercial debt. Um, and a number of the countries have, um, you know, officially endorsed this uh, such, you know, at cabinet level. Uh, meaning doing the debt swap and agreeing to uh, it's going to these swaps will be very similar to the Seychelles swap and that the countries are committing to doing a marine spatial plan um, in, in increasing the uh, the area of their EEZ under uh, protection to 30 percent including these uh, no-take areas and updating policies based on the outcomes of the MSP um, and uh, in, we won't be able to necessarily take out all of the debt. For example, in, in Grenada, as you can see, there's both bilateral debt. And we've actually spoken to that creditor, and they're very interested in selling. Um, but in the commercial debt, um, we would you know, try to buy a portion of that. But uh, you know, to raise all that capital to buy all that out would be uh, you know, difficult. Um, so, uh, but the hope is, is that in the, probably, I'd say, in the next uh, Maybe a year out from now, we'll we're, we're hopefully be in a position to announce another few of these uh, as having been um, completed. And, uh, and I think that there's definitely more countries out there that have expressed interest. Um, but uh, there's only, uh, I, I'm, I, I work full time on this, but there's only so much I can do at one time. So, uh, but we, we see a big pipeline and, and see that we could be doing uh, this for uh, a number of years and, you know, could even. Uh, by the moment it's all said and done, get to the point of you know having done half a billion or more of debt restructuring uh, with with countries, and uh, that's that's our goal, and uh, and hopefully we we surpass that. Um, Oh, so actually, there's two more slides after this. Uh, so just really quickly on some of the, what does it take to pull off one of these debt swaps, um, the enabling conditions? You know, obviously, we need to have the, the, the debtor country uh, being willing to do this and, and put the, the work in and to endorse the, the conservation of policy commitments. Uh, they need to have a creditor who's willing to sell. Um, also need to then have the financing in place, um, the, the combination of grant and loan capital. Uh, these can all often happen in parallel. Obviously, you need the first one, you know, the, 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 the country willingness to do this in place first, uh, and then the other things can happen um, in parallel. And then, obviously, to close, you need that trust entity uh, created and operational. Fortunately, a number of these countries that we're working with already have the trust entities in place or are, we're already developing them. Uh, we didn't have to do it, create it from scratch, like here in the Seychelles. And then uh, the legal agreements finalized. Um, but it's fairly straightforward, um, if, if uh, not, uh, if, if, even though it does take some time. Um, I'll start maybe real quick with some lessons learned and then let the, the minister talk from, from his side. Obviously, my, my first point is patience. You know, we spent four years working on this Seychelles deal. Uh, you know, uh, we're ho uh, hopeful that uh, these next ones won't take quite as long. Obviously, when you do something uh, for the first time, and I think there are many firsts in this deal, you know, first time using impact capital or loan money to do a debt swap. First uh, one focused on um, marine conservation and climate adaptation. Uh, first one negotiated in the Paris Club. Uh, you know, so often doing something for the first time takes a little extra time. Uh, scale matters. Um, if we're going to put all this time and effort in, we want to, you know, really make a dent in terms of uh, creating enough cash flow to address the issues. Uh, but also to make it worthwhile uh, for the, the country to, you know, uh, put in the work on their side as, as well from, from the Nature Conservancy side. 
Um, obviously, Ministry of Finance is key. Uh, you know, historically for the Nature Conservancy, we've we always had good relationships with Ministry of Environment, and uh, so. But uh, in this deal and in, in other deals, we have co-leads from government in, in terms of Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Environment working together and. And uh, that's something new for us, and um, and I don't think in a lot of countries necessarily the two ministries necessarily work very deeply on projects like this scale. So I think that's also a, you know somewhat unique about this. The high level commitments are helpful. Um, we had uh, Seychelles vice president uh, at Rio announce that they would uh, put 30% into protection if we could do a debt swap, and uh, obviously that helps. Uh, the concepts have been very well received by uh, SIDS and the public and private donors, impact investors. Um, as you can see by the, the pipeline we have developed, and uh, uh, but broad stakeholder consensus is necessary. This is at multiple levels: the marine spatial planning process to the the board, um, and then finally, uh, the swap discussions have um, uh, you know advanced conservation commitments and, and mobilized funding. Um, you know, I think here in the Seychelles, for example, there's a, a new uh, Jeff project that uh, uh, with the World Bank uh, potentially that will add some uh, additional funding to uh, help implement uh, outcomes in the marine spatial plan and things like that. I don't know, Minister, if you have anything you want to add. Well, the main thing I think um, also in the case of Seychelles, the president of Seychelles um, was also involved in the um, link up with the president of France. So working at really the highest level is also very important. And also the question of timing, I think this is probably the best time because at the moment, I mean, Seychelles was able to pull it off with the Paris Club right just before the Paris um, Summit on climate change. So when you talk about the climate adaptation and conservation, um, it's easier for people to understand and also to be more motivated if it's before a big, um, um, summit like this one, but at the same time, we still have the um, Paris Agreement, which is still very much um, a baby now, and it needs to be nursed. So the, the period during that period that is still being um, at the very initial stage of implementation, and I think it's critical that um, countries also that are interested in um, debt swap that they um, pick up on that momentum and 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 and, and get it through. Um, so these are, I think, the main um, important, but also depth swap is not something which is very easy for people to understand. So I think um, it's very important to take the time to explain and sell it so that everybody really understand what it's all about and what we're trying to achieve, because otherwise it can be easily be distorted and um, can, can get very complicated afterwards. So I think that concludes our uh, presentation and we're ready to take questions. Great. Minister Dogley and Rob, thank you very much for your presentation. We have some questions from the audience and colleagues that we definitely appreciate your input on. To start us off, the Seychelles that SWAP took four years to complete. You've highlighted a number of lessons learned from the design of this model what are some ways in which you plan to use these lessons to streamline the process for countries that are in the pipeline? Yeah, so um, the uh, probably best way to think about it is, is that, uh, you know, now that there is a you know model to look at, it makes it uh, um, easier to uh, you know, have something to point to and say, you know, this is what it looks like and, and this is what we're aiming for. Uh, versus, you know, it's having a, a theoretical idea in someone's head or on a piece of paper. Um, but uh, as well, you know, while working on um, the, uh, with the Seychelles over the last four years, we were still um, speaking to other countries about this. And, and in fact, the, you know, the, I think the, the Palau um, interest in, in Palau happened after the president of the Seychelles and the president of Palau met. And soon after, uh, the government of Palau reached out and said, we want to talk to you about a debt swap. And so, again, you know, coming back to uh, the minister's point, you know, getting that, that, that high level uh, involvement and engagement really helps. Um, and on the, on the funding side as well, I've been out speaking to, um, you know, various um, multilaterals and bilaterals. And so there's a lot of interest on their side. And um, 
Uh, and so it, I think a lot of what held us up in the Seychelles, there was two things. One was raising all the capital. Um, but in speaking about the pipeline with uh, other multilaterals and bilaterals, they've uh, become involved. And so it actually looks like we have some uh, decent funding la lined up for these other debt swaps. And um, the, uh, the grant maker, the, the foundations, the private foundation that gave grants did announce in Paris that they would like to continue to fund these. So it's good to know that the, the foundations find this attractive. So that the, raising the grant money is um, you know, the most difficult part. Um, so it's you know, it's just a matter of uh, continuing to uh, you know make the case and, and talk about it and and uh, and and seeing and getting the first one done and I think that's that's going to make these these next ones move faster. Oh, great. On that note, um, can you speak to how NatureVest raised the twenty point nine million dollars loan to the government of the Seychelles and the cost of that capital? Sure, yeah. So, um, well, the Nature Conservancy, for those of you who aren't familiar with us, we've uh, been around 65 years, uh, started out as a land trust. And so, uh, over 65 years of uh, buying land and having land donated to us, we end up actually having a fairly large uh, balance sheet. Um, so, we have a, over a $6 billion balance sheet and a double A bond rating. Uh, and we also have a, a revolving loan fund internally. Um, uh, that it allows us to um, you know buy land quickly and, and then raise the grant money to pay it back. So uh, the the 20.9 million that TNC put into this came out of that loan, uh, the revolving loan fund, which is called our land preservation fund. Um, but in the future, um, some of the, the when we do these additional debt swaps and uh, we're working with multi and bilaterals to uh, get concessionary loan financing from them. Uh, again, it's going to be us using our balance sheet, our AA bond rating and, and that, that six plus billion dollar balance sheet will allow us to borrow at fairly good uh, rates. Um, you know, so the example of the, the buying out the loan for the, the Seychelles, actually uh, this um, European based multilateral TNC will uh, be a um, guarantor of that loan and because of that our 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 um double a rating and balance sheet that's why they can lend to the trust at one and a half percent and 20 years so it's really nature vest is that was set up to uh you know the, uh, the nature conservancy has taken a bet that you know how can we use our balance sheet and leverage it to further our mission and in, in, in of conservation because otherwise, those assets are, you know, we intend to hold on to that land forever, but they're, they're tied up forever. So this is just a way for us to leverage those assets to further conservation. Great. Thanks, Rob. Minister Dogley, um, the Republic of Seychelles has demonstrated progressive political leadership to drive this deal forward. What safeguards are in place to ensure that the commitments made by your administration are upheld in the long term? This question also dives into investment risk for debt for nature swaps, such as this one. From the perspective of TNC, if the creditors are only willing to sell debt at a discount because of the repayment risk, how is TNC able to mitigate that risk better than the original creditor? Well, Seychelles has first of all signed an agreement with TNC so that we will pay back. And, um, Basically, Seychelles um, has built a reputation during the last um, almost 70 years um, as far as repayment is concerned. And um, if you look at our rating right now for repayment of debt, um, it's BB+, plus, which is relatively good for a small island developing state. Um, but also the, um, the SACAT has also been created under law, which means that um, um, the money that we've borrowed in the SICAD, um, another administration cannot do away with it. Um, it will have to change the law. And um, even if this administration is not in power, it will be probably in the opposition. So for you to be able to simply change an act in Seychelles, um, it's not that easy. You have to go to parliament and push it through. And, um, and having this government in opposition will also make it very difficult for any other um, government in power to just change something that this government or this administration um, fully believes in. Um, but also the whole process has involved a number of stakeholders. As you said, it took four years, but it was four years whereby we had very broad 
um, consultation and involved a number of people and made sure that um, people understood what we were trying to do and why we're doing it. So there is, and, um, and Seychelles also has got a very long program of environmental education. We started back in the mid 90s and a lot of young people and um, in general people are very much pro-environment. So for a government to simply, administration to simply change um, the concept of um, having 30% of our EZ um, protected and also um, the whole concept of the debt swap and having SECAT um, and the MSP in place is going to be very difficult. Yeah, and from the you know TNC side, um, you know we've looked at uh, you know the history of debt swaps, and you know there's easily been over six billion dollars worth of them done, and uh, that that I, I came across in, in research, and you know there's no example of a country ever defaulting on a debt swap, and if if you think about it, they really would be defaulting upon on themselves and and investing in things that they want to invest in. Um, not to say though that um, some sort of uh, external shock couldn't happen to a country, you know, like a global financial crisis, uh, like we just saw, um, or natural disasters, and and those are usually what end up putting, a, you know, causing a, a country like Seychelles or another SID to need to restructure debt, and so um, the trust would work with the government to restructure the debt if, if necessary, extend the maturities and things like that. Um, but beyond that, you know, within uh, the legal agreements, um, you know, for example, the, the note that TNC has with the trust, you know, does allow in, in, if in the case of full default, you know, the endowment that is being created by the trust could, uh, is as, uh, as backing that, that, uh, loan to TNC. And so that is collateral that could be collected in a worst case scenario. Uh, you know, so we try to be, you know, thoughtful about, uh, about these things, uh, and, and try to be, you know, um, Think about it, you know, worst case scenarios, you know, prepare for the worst, uh, but hope, you know, the, that we don't expect that to, to ever happen. Great, thanks for your response. We have a number of audience members from the Seychelles that would like to learn more about the types of projects to be supported by SACAT. To, to add to this question, can you speak to the local capacity to capture the funding that will come on stream for? marine conservation and fisheries management projects? Well, there's a number of, um, as far as NGOs in the biodiversity and also nature conservation um, area is concerned, Seychelles has got about, I believe, 12 NGOs that are registered and are active. Some of them have been active since the early 1990s. So they've got quite a, number, quite a bit of capacity and experience in, um, in that area of work. Um, but also government um, through its ministries and also the National Park Authority and other um, bodies that it has um, also has been very active in environment activities, also directly responsible for conservation. Um, but we will also be supporting um, coastal tourism activities, um, activities that has to do with um, adaptation um, to climate change, building resilience and also socio-economic activities as I've said, um, things like aquaculture if somebody wants to venture into that, but also small bio um, 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 activities, biochemicals and so on that people would like to produce, let's say from seaweed that can, they can um, develop um, so that can be used either as fertilizers for agriculture or other stuff that can be used as supplement for food and other um, products that they would like to produce. So help sustain um, um, social um, livelihood and social economic activities, but also um, research as far as um, biodiversity conservation is concerned and sustainable use um, that has got to do with fisheries and um, um, seagrass, seagrass um, beds and, and mangroves and so on. So, um, so there's, there's, uh, I, I believe the, the scope for most registered organization that is recognized by law in Seychelles and that has existed um, during the next, um, the last three or four years, um, there is scope for them to participate and to be able to access the funding. Great. 
We have a number of different questions that revolve around building relationships with the Ministry of Finance. Um, there are folks from other small island developing states that are asking that when you were building the relationship with the Ministry of Finance in the Seychelles, if there was a particular argument that was extremely effective in convincing that ministry to support the deal. I guess this question leads to how do we structure the language of the debt swaps to be more attractive to ministries of finance of other small island developing states? Yeah, uh, you know, what I, uh, what I have found is, is that um, while they're, you know, they're interested in how the proceeds would be used, they're obviously most interested in is their, um, you know, their debt profile and their balance of payments and, and things like that. And so what really attracts the uh, Ministry of Finance to this deal is, you know, that point of redirecting $17 million of debt service to funding work in the Seychelles over 20 years. You know, the one way to think of it is, is if we didn't do the debt swap, that 17 million would leave the Seychelles forever. Through the debt swap now, that 17 million is now invested in the Seychelles and in, in all of these activities and, and through on the ground and, and capitalizing an endowment. Uh, and then you add to that that um, the point that uh, two thirds of that's payable in local currency. That's also very attractive to the ministries of finance. And then the fact that we extended maturities from eight to 20 years which creates a fiscal space of over $2 million a year for the Ministry of Finance. So uh, for obvious reasons, the Ministry of Finance is very focused on the economics of the deal um, and, you know, versus the Ministry of Environment, where they're, they're uh, interested in, obviously, the, the cash flow, but what it can fund on the ground. And so, uh, but yeah, I have found that, you know, in, in selling this and, and the, the idea, it's, you know, for the, it, depends on the audience, you know, with the Ministry of Finance, it's really about the economics and how you're going to help uh, redirect uh, debt service and, uh, and create fiscal space um, and, and, and less on, you know, they're, they're definitely interested in what will be funded out of it. But at the end of the day, that's their responsibility is to, you know, manage the, the government's, uh, um, you know, finances. To transition away from the ministries of finance to more local based organizations, a question that we got from the audience explores the relationship between large scale financing and local communities. Debt for nature swap arrangements have in the past been criticized for benefiting conservation organizations rather than the debtor country and shifting large areas of land into the control of environmental groups. Um, without empowering or benefiting local communities. In the Seychelles case, how will local small-scale fisheries and fisheries communities be impacted? Um, what opportunities do local communities have to participate in this arrangement? Well, the local communities, especially um, the, as Rob has already indicated, I mean, on the SECAT board, we already have um, um, the private sector and also the NGOs, um, local NGOs involved in um, deciding how the money is going to be used and where it's going to be invested. Um, and, um, and they also have to determine exactly what is going to be the priorities and where we're going to put the money. Um, outside Seychelles, the only organization that has one representative on the board is the TNC. So basically, the whole um, debt swap and the use of the resources that has accrued from the debt swap will be decided by those people that are involved um, directly with the socio-economic development of Seychelles, be it fisheries, be it um, tourism, especially coastal tourism, but also with the input coming from government. Um, so as to, prove, to provide certain guidance. So in the case of Seychelles, um, I think it's relatively clear that um, the money will not be going towards certain um, conservation groups, but that it, the, the, the private sector will have um, a lot to say also of how the money is going to be, to be used. But also the marine special planning is also being developed to a very broad stakeholder consultation. 
and um, the map or the plan that will come out at the end of the day will be owned by um, the Seychellois, the people from Seychelles who will decide exactly which areas, where they are, um, that should be um, put under conservation and why should be it should be put under conservation. Um, it's not something that will be um, decided fully by an outside organization or a large um, conservation group. Um, it has to go through um, um, a participative and con I mean, a stakeholder um, debate and, um, and discussions before at the end of the day the decision is made and the implementation will also will have to be done through um, public um, participation and it will have a review because the whole thing will not be 100% um, um, cast in stone. Great, thanks Minister Dudley. Can you also speak to the relationship between the debt swap and the Seychelles' commitment to the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals and the implementation of the Agreement on Climate Change? Well, the implementation of the debt swap um, aims a lot towards um, at least the um, 14, the goal um, 14 of the Sustainable Development Goal, which has to do with um, the ocean. Um, which is basically conservation, and I believe quite a bit of it comes from the CBD um, um, targets, which is 10% um, of the um, terrestrial area should be protected, and 17 um, of the marine should be um, protected. But we believe we should go beyond because all the reports that are coming out shows clearly um, that the world needs to be more if we are going to. Re to, to protect the biodiversity of this world. And with climate change and um, hypoxia and um, uh, sea level rise and uh, acidification, ocean acidification and everything that's happening, um, it is clear that we need to have a bigger chunk of our ocean protected. And we are a small island state, we realize that um, the only way that we can remain viable state is that we need to do all we can um, to protect those vital ecosystems that provide the ecosystem services and the resources, the natural resources that we need um, um, to function economically, but also to provide the necessary resources to our people. And also the issue of um, poverty alleviation um, by investing, um, by putting enough money in SECAT to invest in social economic activities, um, basically we, it's part of a strategy to create wealth um, for the nation and for people to be able to be um, empowered for them to produce more and to be smarter and to have the knowledge and the skills that they need for them to um, adapt to new ways um, whenever we are um, being affected by climate change and others. And of course it has to do with issues like um, um, having safe water, um, electricity and other resources that people need to live, which is um, basically in the sustainable development goals. Um, by creating wealth and by making, um, by putting resources um, at the, and providing access and facilitating access to these resources in itself, it will be, um, and um, by also um, making sure that sustainable development becomes our number one um, strategy for development and long-term policy for development. In doing that, we will be implementing the, the, SD, the SDGs within the Seychelles. Great. Minister Dogley and Rob, thank you so much for joining us today. That concludes the talk on the Seychelles debt swap. If you wish to review a recording of this webinar, please visit the CBay website or access the recording through YouTube or Yale iTunes U. Thank you again for joining us. Until next time, this is Karina Mahong from the Yale Center for Business and the Environment.